This is insane. 300,000 people have just subscribed within the past hour to Third Phase of Moon. It's been a wild ride now. 300,000 people are aware of Third Phase. we got to get the word out. People need to subscribe to Third Phase. They hear the stories. People share their stories. I've spoken to tens of thousands of people over the past uh, few years. About five years now in Third Phase. And, uh, man, people out there know that we're not alone. And... I've heard the testimony. We've all heard it. We've seen the evidence, and we know there is a phenomenon going on right now, and that's what Third Phase of Moon is trying to find out. Get the answers. Get it out to the public because the public knows what's happening. The government knows, but they're not telling us. The government's from all around the world. They have insight, but they're keeping it a secret. But the people know better. They have just as much information as what the highest top clearance person in the in the world knows they're out there, the public, and that's what we're uh, taking calls from around the world. People like you, people like you that have the insight, who who've worked in secret government installations like Area 51. We've been in there. We've heard what it's like. People, you need to come out, share your stories, share the information. The world needs to wake up. All right. It's going to be an incredible show today. we got a lot of callers calling in, so we're going to try and get to everybody. The number to call in is 347-934-0378. This is Third Phase Moon Radio Live. Let's get to it. Area code 801. Welcome to the show. Where are you calling from? What's your name? Uh, my name is Nathan from Utah. Hey, Nathan. How's it going? Hey, really good. I just wanted to report for you something kind of interesting that happened about a week ago. Uh, well, I'm not too far away from, from Dugway Proving Ground, and uh, we had a winter storm, but uh, the flight pattern that where our airlines go through to the Salt Lake International Airport, they have a okay. consistent, flight, consistent flight pattern. So you can hear some engine noise from most of the jets, but uh, one particular night, uh, I heard this loudest like jet rumble, like if it was like over your head, but continuously, but I don't know, maybe like if it was a mile and a half away, so it wasn't like ear piercing, but it was really strong, and so I asked my buddy that I work with that lives about 15 minutes away, I'm like go outside tonight and uh, hear if you're hearing what I'm hearing, because I hear this loud rumble in the, in the sky, and I think it might be one of their new secret jets that they have that's I don't know, above Mach 20, I would think I don't know. It's pretty interesting. So I didn't know if anybody had reported that in my area on your show. Wow, that's kind of interesting. Mach 20, that's pretty fast. Was there like a double sonic boom, like boom, boom, or was it just one? Big no, it rumble? wasn't a. It wasn't a big sonic boom. It was just like a continuous, you know, almost like if you're at the, uh, you know, space launch, but way far away, you could just hear it rumbling forever, and that's how it would go, and it would go in succession, like it would go for. I don't know, maybe 35 seconds to a minute long, just rumbling, and then it would go away, and then it would come back. It was just way crazy. But you couldn't see anything in the sky. You know, I've, I've re- received reports just last week, as you say, on the East Coast of basically the same sounds that you've heard. So I think this is, whatever this phenomenon was, new secret military aircraft, it sounds logical, but yeah, I think it's I, possible. I, I, could, I could under why they need to keep this stuff a secret, right? They need to have that war machine. Well, it, I mean, it definitely was an extraterrestrial, because I know that, and I've called in on your show and told you about some of my stories, but this was sure. more man-made, you know, so Just weird. fuel or some kind of different propulsion system, but it would sound like a jet engine. It was, kind of, it was weird, though. Yeah, I, I'd imagine that's uh, when you hear a continuous rumble, you don't know if maybe an earthquake's coming towards you because you feel you hear that sound before you start to rock and roll because the earth starts to oh. start the rock starts to crack and then you hear that sound and then you start to feel it. So yeah, I can imagine that that was kind of an interesting experience, Nathan, over there in Utah. Oh yeah. Well, my friend and I are actually going to head out to the desert and do some uh, some calling ins and stuff and having some. Uh, experiences so we're, we're going to take some footage of that because uh, we actually have a, a contact 
tool that, of course, you know, Dr. Stephen Gurr has, and that it's actually a successful application that works if you know how to use it properly through uh, consciousness, and it, and it really does happen. So we'll take some videos of that and present it on your show. Absolutely, Nathan. We're standing by. That's the best. We love UFO video evidence. Nathan, on the hunt tonight, You uh, good luck over there in Utah, Nathan. Thanks for calling in. My one last question for you that we had on last show's conversation was the ability to in, invite them. Uh, it's an invitation, not an abduction. And I think you might remember that from last year's, uh, I mean, yesterday, last week's show. So maybe share that message with the people, too. For sure. I, you know, I think it's a special uh, invitation, if, and it's not an abduction. When you uh, encounter an alien being, you're taken aboard the ship, you're invited aboard the ship. That's why I, yeah, I, I it, take that experience. It's exactly, a positive and that's experience. why every, everybody on this show that is interested in uh, extraterrestrials have it already invited that into their lives at an early stage, and it's just a natural occurrence because we're part of them and part Absolutely. of this whole whole life and existence. Yeah. That's right. We'll we'll try and stay on that key tonight. And uh thank you, Nathan from uh, Utah because I believe that alien contact is positive. Some people say, "Oh, you better watch out. This is the, you're calling demons. This is a demonic entity." Sorry to uh say that this is an alien. It's demonic. Well, you know, I I have a different opinion on that, but you know, I'm not saying I I'm right. I'm just saying that's my opinion, and that's what Third Phase of the Moon is all about. People's opinions and freedom of speech. Let the public decide. Let's go to area code 765. Welcome to Third Phase. 765? All right. We'll uh, move along to area code 360. 360, you there? Yeah, you hear me? I got you loud and clear. What's your name? Chris, what's up, Blake? Hey, Chris, welcome to the show. Thanks. Um, yeah, so my story, uh, this is probably, gosh, about four years ago on 4th of July. Where? I was sitting out uh, here in Carson, Washington, actually. Okay. It's a small little, small little town. Um, I was just, you know, sitting outside enjoying the fireworks. I couldn't really see them too much because we kind of live in a, you know, wooded area, but... I was just out there listening and, you know, I could kind of see a little bit, you know, but anyways, long story short, uh, all of a sudden I see this bright amber colored orb that just kind of came out of nowhere above these trees, this forest area, kind of to my left where I was standing. And all of a sudden it just kind of would disappear and reappear in different areas. And I just thought, whoa, you know, this is definitely not like your typical aircraft. And I just kind of observed it for a while, and then it just kind of eventually kind of, you know, moved along, and I didn't see it anymore. And I just thought, wow, you know, that was amazing. And so I went out the next night, not expecting to see anything at all, but just curious to see if it would happen again. So I went out on the upstairs porch again and sitting out there, and within seconds, here it comes again, same exact one. And just kind of doing the same thing and moving around. And I just thought, wow, this is like so cool. You know, like I've heard so many stories about stuff like this. And now I'm actually seeing it for myself. And it did basically the same thing. It kind of bounced around and I didn't hear any sound coming from it. And so it, it just it kind of eventually. What's that? No, it wasn't a drone, obviously. No sound. What kind of. What no, kind of there was. Was it. Uh, it was like kind of like an amber color and oh, you know cool. like in the story of ezekiel in the bible the way he described that color that that amber color that's what it really reminded me of and i just thought wow you know that's that's crazy i mean like obviously there has been other people that have seen the same type of possible ship you know even a long time ago and yeah. uh yeah, so it you know it kind of faded away, and I just thought you know okay this is really cool. I got to get my brother over here, so I called him, told him about the next day, and he came over that next night, the third night, and so you know we didn't see anything right away, and we're both sitting out there, and it was the craziest thing because we both just 
for some reason felt it and we looked straight up above us and here it was it was right up above our house and it just slowly creeped over our house moving wow. around you know like real slow and then it just kind of went out in front of us and you know it didn't really disappear reappear this time it was like it was watching us like i you just feel it and uh you know eventually after maybe five ten minutes it kind of just drifted over the tall trees in the forest and you couldn't see it anymore so the crazy thing is that was the very last night the forest night i oh. go out by myself <laughs> yeah the forest night was crazy i am sitting out there all of a sudden here it comes again i couldn't believe it and it's kind of going over because i live like in southwest washington so i'm real close to oregon and i can actually see the oregon mountains from our uh, upstairs deck and so you know here it comes flying real slow creeping along and then it wasn't maybe 10 15 minutes later here comes a military fighter jet and i'm pretty sure it was an f-16 uh fighting falcon because i could see the single engine and i could yep. see the undercarriage and just you could see the lights it was all loaded had missiles and just oh, the no. fuel tanks and everything yeah and this this fighter jet started chasing me what's it's that intercept. it's an intercept it's yeah chasing a fighter oh yeah total totally and so this ufo it started moving along you know a little bit quicker because obviously it saw it and it started taking off and the crazy thing was this this ufo it just started changing colors from this bright golden amber color that i've seen for the last four days it just went into a deep deep purple and then almost like a blue and then it just changed back to bright white and had all these sparkle like i don't know i describe it kind of like these like sparkles almost like a uh Oh, kind of like a firework, I guess a little bit, but it was all around the ship. And all of a sudden it just vanished, gone, disappeared right in thin air. The military jet just kept going in the same direction and it was just gone. Like it didn't have anything to follow. I couldn't believe it. And so I tried going out one more night and nothing. It never came back again. But I just thought, wow, that was yeah. insane. Like that. Wow. And very lucky once in a time opportunity there in its own sense oh, I mean, yeah. i'm just thinking about how to uh title this and i'm thinking falcon jet chases ufo over the u.s would that be a proper statement chris oh i think so it sounds good yeah. definitely but you know well, it was what was so strange about this is what i was telling some friends about it you know through texting and stuff like that and you know i totally believe the government you know, listens to everybody on our smartphones and tracks everything for sure. And, yeah. you know, the the weird thing was, I'm, this is like maybe like a few days later, maybe a week later. I, it's hard to remember this is a while back, but it wasn't much longer after. I'm upstairs in my bedroom and obviously it was the summertime, so it was warm. And I had my window open and I was just sitting in my chair playing Xbox or something like that. And all of a sudden I hear this helicopter and it's like one o'clock in the morning and just loud like really low and i'm thinking you know, what the hell is going on and this helicopter flew basically around our house flew around to where my bedroom window is and this was like some military black hawk is when i was pretty sure it was and it just sat there and they were staring at me through my window upstairs and i just felt like wow like pretty intimidated and they hovered there for maybe 30 seconds and then they left mm -hmm. well you I know thought that was pretty strange <laughs> there's an intimidation factor i've i've received uh, many phone calls of people that have had their sightings and then immediately the day or so later black hawks just swarming over right. their home i've heard people say things like that on your show i just thought wow it gave me chills when i've heard people say that because i experienced I it as well I'm wondering if that's uh, the protocol now. Intimidate after a UFO eyewitness. Is, is this a apparate? Uh, I, it just, you know, hmm. I don't understand that. I wish yeah. I wish there would be uh, more answers. And who are these people? And what are their instructions flying these black cocks? Oh, go intimidate oh, this person that saw a UFO and uh, intimidate them. I wonder what they think about that. Because yeah, I mean, what's the point? 
What's the point? And these guys are American citizens. They should, these people that are flying these Blackhawks should explain to us. And we, we might get information from one of these pilots one of these days, and we'll find out what the protocol is. I think that would be great. And what yeah, I agree. Agenda? Why? Chris, yeah, you, definitely. You brought, up a, you brought up a big question tonight, and we're going to we're gonna share your story. And uh, the Falcon jet chases UFO over, where was this exactly, Chris? Uh, this is in Carson, Washington. I'm in southwest Carson. Washington. Yeah, got it. Okay, I got that down. And, uh, you know, I'll put that in the notes because I got a feeling we're going to – and I don't think it's going to be a one-time life experience for you. I got a feeling you're going to be seeing more things. So have your camera ready, okay, Chris, over there in Carson? Oh, yeah. I mean, I'll tell you what. I'll call in another time so you can get the other callers and stuff. But I've got numerous stories of other UFO sightings. Well, do you definitely call in third phase moon Fridays, or we might be calling you. We're doing that now, and uh, we we uh, oh, have cool. your number. So we've been reaching out to the All public, right. cold calling. It's quite amazing. Chris, appreciate right. it. Keep your eyes on the skies, man. Stay safe. Right. Thanks, Blake. Take it easy. Yep, we'll do. Thanks, Chris. Wow, that that's kind of interesting, people. And there's a correlation going on, and why? This intimidation factor after witnessing a UFO. We've heard it so many times now. Also, we're trying to give it a shout out to F1. We haven't seen F1 for a while. He's kind of dropped off the grid, and that's kind of uh, concerning me. I'm going to get in. A, we're going to try and find out what happened to F1 real quick, and we'll get hey, callers. Wait. Yeah, we got Betsy here. Betsy, you've been trying to get. Where's F1? Any idea? You know, dude, I talk to him normally every day, yeah. and I have not seen him in two weeks. He's not yeah. returned my phone calls, my texts, anything. I'm worried about him. Um, uh, whatever her name is, she's been really sick. Um, I can't think of her name now. Chalice. 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 I've been talking to her. She's been really sick. Okay. So I don't know. Very concerning. I don't know what's going on with either of them. You know, I haven't heard from F1. I haven't heard from Chalice. And we're 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 reaching out to him right now, third phase, and just call us tonight. Just make us make us feel better that we know you guys are safe. You guys don't have to tune into third phase moon every Friday, F1 and Chalice. But it's kind of weird that you guys dropped out on that. So. F1 I have not heard from, and I'm kind of worried because I talk to him almost every day. Every day. And I know that he's spoken highly of you, and there would be no reason why he would cut off communications. It's weird because this intimidation factor is weird when people are sharing the truth. And then even F1 is being tracked by uh, Black Hawk helicopters. He left one house. Thought he could get away, and then they found him again and flew over his house with a, more uh, Apache Black helicopter. So it's a weird deal. Keep yeah, reaching out. He just, he just... Thanks, dude. I'll keep, keep on him. Re- keep on him. Keep on him, Betsy. Wow. You know, I appreciate Betsy. She's uh, She really uh, collaborates with a lot of the callers into third phase, and they, there's a whole community of family out there that – feel that they could talk and they meet each other for the first time on third phase moon and that's what's amazing making people come together around the world okay here we go we're going to get to one more call then we're going to go to break and then we're going to get to a lot more callers wild ride tonight people 505 you're live third phase moon hey blake it's doug in albuquerque how are you doug yes hey doug right on hey thanks for joining us Hey, thanks for taking my call. It's fantastic. Hey, uh, Chris's information was really cool. Wasn't it? It's kind of like uh, there's so much of this stuff going on that people just, they may or may not be aware of, but I'm so thankful, uh, Blake, that you and your brother and everybody has come together and put this show together Brennan, uh, I think for people to share. Yes, that's all it's about. It's an open line for sharing for this phenomenon. Right. And there's no other place so, like it in the world. Yep. Right. So listen, listen to what I have to say. Um, I've got uh, a lot of, uh, I've been very interested in the whole UFO thing and how it relates to everything, including how Christians may view it and 
how uh, non-believers may view it. And sure. the thing of it is, I I saw seven UFOs one morning, okay? And and it didn't shock me. It was kind of like, oh, wow, UFOs, unidentifiable Where, things I, sitting in the air. Uh, I was in Albuquerque, and they okay. came over the mountains. First three came over and stopped right over the crest of the mountain in a little triangle, and then two more. And then a couple minutes later, two more. And then at one point, they all just faded away. But what it did, Blake, is it caused me to start asking everybody I meet, have you ever seen a UFO or anything you can say is unidentifiable? And I'm not kidding you, about 20 20 to 25% of everybody I talk to have seen something, and I write their stories down. And I have tons of wonderful stories from people that I trust that are my family members and my good friends. Wow, let's hear one of them. Well, uh, for instance, um, I sent you, Blake, I don't know if you remember this or not, but I sent you an audio recording that I interviewed my friend Bob. Who Now, Bob was the single person in Arizona who was the closest person ever to the Phoenix Lights. Now, he Bob... Was he was there on the ground. Yeah, I, okay. Yeah, now, Bob was on the South Mountain. He was there... Uh, he's a he's a bike bicycle rider, and at night oh, the mountains closed, and he was riding up the mountain because there's a couple of us that are bike riders in in that area, and we go up the mountain when it's closed and stuff. It's no big deal. We just do it. We have night lights and everything. And Bob said he saw those lights going over the mountain, and it was the um, he told the whole story. I've got it on audio, uh, and I can send it to you again if you need me to. But um, he said he he. He was so intrigued, he shot up that mountain so fast, as quickly as he could, and he got up to it. So he was by far the closest person to it, and he explained it just like everyone else, silent. And I asked him all the questions. Were the lights, you know, blinking? Were they rotating? You know, was it a ship? Was it this or that? And I tried to uh, debunk, his, debunk him with my interview for him, of him, and uh, it was so legitimate. It was unbelievable, and he said, um, you know, he was there. He was close to it, but still, you know, no one really knew for sure what was going on, but uh, we've got it on film, and of course, now we've got some people like Bob and thousands of others that saw it in Phoenix, so there's one good example. Nice. That's pretty cool. You know, um, Doug, that you reached out, and you're reaching out to people. 100% of the people that you asked because you had this experience, next thing you know, you want to talk about UFOs. None of them thought you're crazy, and everybody really had kind of some kind of story to say. My, yeah. Right? That's, yeah. That's I mean, really some cool. people, some people did not, but most everyone really? said, "Yeah, yeah, I saw something I can't explain." You know, it was this weird thing. But even my sister and one of my brothers, they've seen lights that kind of shoot around and stuff. But a really good one was up by in near Dulce, New Mexico. There's there's an area called Archuleta Mesa, and it's all on the maps and everyone. My good friend was up there hunting, and he saw a light, you know, uh, at night shoot one way, and then he he says it went 60 miles the other direction in one second and stopped, and then boom, shot off again somewhere else. So it's all, you know, it's all true stuff, and it, these are legitimate stories that people tell. Yeah, exactly. What could have possibly jumped 60 miles in one second that uh, we don't have any stuff like that? That's extraterrestrial tech, in my opinion. And uh, I've seen that myself thousands Millions of people have seen this throughout uh, the decade, at least I'm sure. And when sure. these people, when these people say these stories, they they're not seeing things. They're practical. They they tell their story in a in a form that makes a lot of sense. These people yeah. aren't making things up. Why would they make it up? They saw something that jumped sixty thousand uh, six miles, sixty miles in a second. They saw this. What yeah. is it? It's like, how do you explain that to me? You can't tell me it didn't happen. Blake, you can't tell me I didn't see what I saw. I promise you, I saw seven things come over the mountain and stop all in a line. Wow, that sounds That's what really I saw. That sounds awesome. You know, you know, and of, of course, I want to debunk it myself. So I say, oh, I'm going to see if it's an ice, uh, if it was ice crystals. I'm going to see if it was uh, sun dogs. I'm going to see if it's, you know, whatever kind of phenomenal, natural phenomenon. I'm willing to accept that if it could be explained, but I couldn't get it explained. But it sure did make sense that they were 
intelligent, and three of them stopped, and then two more, and then two more. So it didn't seem like some random uh, weather phenomenon known as ball lightning, per se. Yeah, or random right, right, right. This, this thing had some geometric, some kind of design yeah. of a formation flight. Yeah, they're, absolutely. They're, 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 you know, <laughs> And so it's kind of fun. It's, I mean, what you're doing is exposing this to everybody. It's like, I believe, um, and man, you know, I sure hope we hear from Chalice and F1 too, because I really enjoy yeah. what they have to say, and they help me to um, solidify my thoughts and everything, because you have to kind of look at the whole perspective. I'm not narrow-minded in my thinking. I'm very open-minded, and I like to hear what they have to say, and it's like, oh, that's cool, you know, and then, and then you just kind of go weigh it and check it out. That's all, and it seems like they're just telling it just like you are, Doug. They're just as genuine as uh, I believe 99% of the callers at the third phase of the moon seem very genuine. Right. And even oh, yeah. if you and even if you tell me what you're telling me, it's up to me to believe it and everybody else to make up their own minds. Yeah. But, you know, it's still like I, I can sense it. I can sense that you're not pulling... Sure. My leg there, Doug. I know you saw something. Okay. Like, I got to tell you, if you have time, one more short story. Okay. Go ahead. Go All ahead. Right. Quick. So this one guy that I met um, at uh, the International Balloon Fiesta that's here, which is, if anybody ever needs to come to Albuquerque, um, this is the place to come because uh, for the Balloon Fiesta, it's absolutely fantastic. It's the number one event that's photographed in the world. But this guy I met there um, who works there, he um, he told me that he saw what looked like this really weird, and he was witnessed it by other people too. This it looked like a city, and it came hovering over this lake we have out here, uh, um, Elephant Butte Lake. And he said it seemed like it was drawing water out of the lake, and then and then after about 30 minutes, it started and just moved right over us and all this. And it's like, wow. So I wrote down his, all his testimony and everything and wrote it down and wrote a little paper about it. And then a year later, I was thinking about it and I said, oh, you know what? Sometimes light reflects over long distances where there's clouds and stuff. And you can actually see the city, you know, from a way far distance away because if, if the moisture content is right and the clouds and the, the light bending – and wow. I talked to him about that, and I said, hey, it must have been light bending. And I explained him the scientific phenomenon to him, and he said, Doug, absolutely not. You were wrong. What I saw was a floating city, and, it, and after it sucked up all this water, it went right over me, and we all watched it go over us, and then, boom, it said it, he said it took off 1,000 miles an hour or a second. He said it was gone, and they saw it disappear. So it's like, wow. You know, so that's fun, that's fun stuff to hear. That is amazing. That's insane. Yeah. You know, uh, Doug, we're going to take a break, and um, I'm going sure. to tell you I'm gonna tell you a story, and we're going to take other callers from around the world about what their experiences right. are, about a city spotted, a city, floating city over the Big Island. I'm going to get to that right after the break. It's quite a amazing Great. story. Yeah, so, we'll be hey, right Blake, back. Let me know if you... If you want me to send that audio recording of my friend that was on South Mountain in Phoenix again. Of course, yeah. Send it. We want to hear it. Send okay, it to my I'll, uh, G- I'll send it you to again. you again. Okay, guys. We'll be right back. Hey, fantastic. Appreciate Good it. luck with everything. Thank you so much, Doug. That's uh, that's quite incredible. That was uh, just 30 minutes since the third phase of Moon Live Radio. And people want to share. They want to share it now. Blake Cousins, we'll be right back.
third days of me. That's right. We're not alone, people. We are not alone. Let me get to the story real quickly. Big Island, 1998, Puico, about 11 p.m. at night, 50 partygoers, I would say. You know, there's a party on the Puico coast. You know, the kegs were out, rock and roll band right there on the beach, nice place. Stars were all out right there on the ocean. A reflection started to shimmer. People looked up. Next thing they all saw, they all panicked, a massive floating city. Uh, the next day, we were out surfing, my brother and I. We weren't there. We we didn't see it, but everybody was talking about it. It was, it was the talk of the Big Island throughout the surf uh, community to say that there was a massive floating UFO city like object massive massive as you would say nobody knew what it was it shook them to the core i i i talked to these people afterwards some of them my friends and they couldn't explain what it was except that it was a floating city so that's my uh, story from the big island of hawaii reporting it's kind of fun and it's it's true people that's what's amazing. Okay, we're giving it a shout out to F1 or Chalice to call us up because they've been they've been uh, down. There's been no contact, and it's very unlike their characteristics to do that, and that's very strange. So F1 Chalice, if you're out there, call us up. All right. In the meanwhile, let's get to callers. Let's go to four four three. You're live. Third phase of moon. Welcome to the show. Yeah. Good evening. How you guys doing? I'm doing good tonight. Good. This is the truth. Giving you guys a call from my vice down Maryland. Yeah. What? The truth? Yes, sir. This is the truth, sir. The right truth. So, uh, what kind of truth can he share with us tonight? Well, I've actually been calling you guys off and on for the past four years. I've been dealing with yep. Doctor J. Have you guys seen Doctor J? He's also missing. Doctor J's off the grid. I haven't heard from him, sir. Normally, he stays in constant contact with me at least uh, once every couple months. And I you know, haven't heard he from him. Oh, he, he's doing okay. He's got – go take a look at his YouTube channel. It's called Dr. J Live or Dr. Radio J Live. It's, if you search up Dr. J Andy Elias on YouTube, his channel will come up. And he's broadcasting, doing his interviews. Well, it's that's good. He, I'm glad he's busy. Yeah, yeah I'm he's, glad he's, he's okay. Doing, I was wondering. Yeah, he's doing all right. Check out okay, his YouTube cool. channel. Make make okay. contact with Dr. J. He's all good. Hey, thanks, okay, Truth. For, uh, that, that's a good question because we want to clarify things when things are uh, – if people don't know what's going on, Dr. J's still going. Check out his channel. I'll put the link below on that one. All right. Glad we could clear that up. Let's get to, let's get to another caller right now. Let's get to area code 270. You're live. Hello, 270, yeah. are you there? Yep. Are you here? I hear you. Um, so, a couple of ways, thanks for coming and letting me on your show. Um, let me just tell you a little bit about my quick background. So, when I was young, I used to love sci-fi and all that stuff. Yep. Um, one thing that I didn't realize is, when I was younger, I used to have really crazy dreams that I could not explain. You know, how your mom says, 
don't watch a creepy show when you go to bed, right? So I have, when this was when I was about three, um, I went to bed, and then after that, I was like, I can't go to sleep, I can't go to sleep. And after that, I found out I got sick for a whole week, couldn't figure it out. But, but other than that, what I'm going to top off the list of right here is there's three things that I want to talk to you about. I don't know if you've talked about one, the Denver airport, two, possible conspiracies under, underground, and and uh, possibly finding out that I may know or may not know about certain craft. Okay. Well, the Denver airport, yeah, let's get into that one because uh, there's a lot of massive power generators above the airport that seem like it's way overkill for just a simple small airport going on over there that there may be so, something um, going on underground. Yep, quickly, go ahead. So here's the, some of the stuff that I've looked at is um, they have way too much runway. So what I've been hearing is a guy tried to attempt to go down the elevator or the stairs and couldn't because there's a ski guard there. But I'm looking at one of the pictures right here for different Denver International Airport. It says March 19, 1994 is when they built it. But if you look in the corner, it says the piece of time capsule beneath this stone contain the mess, messages and memorabilia to the people of Colorado in 2094, which I was reading that in 19, 2094. We are not in that day yet. How could we even possibly put that on there? Something's going on, and it's got the Freemason pinned on there. Yeah, yeah, they got a lot of weird artwork going on, symbolic artwork. It's like it doesn't make any sense. Almost like apocalyptic in your face. Uh, yes. Strangeness. It's a strange place. Jesse Ventura did a special on it on his conspiracy theory channel or his show that he had, and uh, you know they weren't too happy about that. Well, I know they weren't too happy about it because because all of today. If the government was to say, hey, there's people living out there that we know we have held, and there are people out there saying, hey, are we going to fight? Are we going to have a, you know, you know what I mean, right? Yeah, yeah, kind of. Go ahead. Well, we don't want people fighting other people. No. Just because, uh, because if uh, something came to me right now, like a being came to me, I would be like trying to communicate, saying, hey, we, I know you're here, but sit down and, you know, look at all of this technology on the computer, and this is what's happening today. And maybe they can communicate by computer because they're telepathic. Does that... That makes a little sense. You know, there's, there's a there's a lot of powers there's a lot of powers out there that they're experimenting with, and I'm sure the alien telepathic uh, communications that I've heard they're trying to harness that, no doubt about it, and learn it. Because today, if now look at we have the elections and all of this going on and people are saying oh who's doing this who's going to tell the truth but the real fact is I already know they're not going to tell the truth unless somebody goes up to either the White House or up to something like a whole group of people go and say hey we know the truth we're not worried we don't care That's what right. the problem is but the, the more the truth, of, if they say the truth, they're going to come out and say, hey, this is what's going on. 
Okay, the reason why we don't want to panic you is because this is going on. I know for a fact because all the searching I've done, like not real documents, but searching on the internet alone, I listen to a elect electronic detective, um, and there's a lot of nifty stuff. But the one thing I come into mind when I go and search everything is: is it reliable? Is it truth? Is it all this? It is. It's a big question. And, uh, you know, what is the truth out there? What are they trying to hide? What is the agenda? That's, um, these are big questions that we need to find out. And hopefully we find out very, very soon. Appreciate that call in. We got a lot of calls in, so we got to get to them. So let's roll. Let's roll now. Let's go to Aerie Code. Nine eight nine. You're live, third phase of moon. Hello. Hello. Welcome to the show. Hey, yeah, um I had a um a question. Sure. Well it's not really a question, it was just something that I've seen on uh YouTube. There's okay. a video there's this video of um like I showed this UFO like floating above this like lake and some trees. And it showed, like, the UFO, like, sucking up, like, water and some trees. And then it showed, like, military men with an RPG, and they shot it down. And yeah. what I don't get, what I don't get is why they, like, why the government is still hiding stuff from us when we have already seen uh, multiple stuff. Well, yeah, good question. You know, I... I don't think I've seen that video, and if it's out there, it, it might be. It sus. It sounds a little suspect. What do you think? Your yeah. gut react? Do you think it's real or is it CGI? Because th- th- those are the. If you trust your instinct on that, which we've been trying to do for the past few years, and be more f- diligent at looking at the videos coming in, and what's your gut feeling on that video? I'm thinking it's real because it's like Oh real. Um yeah, because it was like full on um there's no way you would be able to fake that because it was like it looked exactly real. Like um it was it was like um I'm trying to think I think it was like a different country's military and it was like one of those news type things that they do. Yeah, they have and, a news um, rail running and they got talking heads on there. That's Seems like that's kind of legitimizes the video. What what country did this come from? Do you, just some foreign country in the Middle East somewhere? Um, probably. It, I don't know what country it was, but it wasn't um our country. But I know it was somewhere out off on the way from us. All right. Well, uh, okay. So what I'm going to do is ask the public to share find that video for me. RPG shoots down UFO. You know, search that. If anybody could find that link, send it to me. That's area code uh, 989. Appreciate that call in and the heads up maybe for something that might be quite interesting. And we'll see if we can obtain rights. That's always a big trick. We always, if we don't have the permission, we really can't share it to the world. But if we, we're looking out for the people, we love the submissions that come in. So we'll see what happens. And if not, we'll just put it up on our Facebook. No big deal. Area code 435. You're live, third phase of me. Yeah, hey, um, I've listened to your show. I think your last live show about okay. the gentleman that was in, that was in Kentucky, the sheriff or the highway patrolman that was in Kentucky and saw the uh, floating sphere. Yep, amazing. And then his and his buddy saw it too, right? And then it shot up eighty thousand feet into the air. Is that the one? Yeah, that's the one. Um, okay, yeah. I wanted to call it. I wanted to call in because I've shared this story with a lot of uh, a lot of um, friends and people that I've grown up with. Uh, I grew up in Elko County in Nevada, and I've seen three of those spheres, one each time on three separate occasions in 19, about 1991 and 92. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> I grew up on a ranch out there, 
And I know this sounds like a funny, funny farmer's story, but uh, I was going out one night uh, to to milk the cows. We had milk cows, wow. and uh, I was walking up to the barn, and something caught the corner of my eye. And I was, and I looked up. I'm like, "What the heck is that?" And I looked up, and there was a a green, like a neon green sphere, a ball, about a hundred to two hundred yards away from me. And my first thought was shock, not fear, but just startled, just surprised. And and then my curiosity got to me, and some, and, you know, my brain just said to me, "Go get it." So I dropped the milk bucket. And I just freaking beeline for that thing as fast as I could go. And I made it about 10, 15 feet, and it floated up about a few feet off the ground. And there was absolutely no noise, no sound whatsoever. It floated up and stopped, and that startled me. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. And I stopped again and just watched it. And then the same thought came to me again, go get it. And I beelined for it as fast as I could go, and that thing shot straight up until it was out of sight and it was fast super fast you know uh, you know the video of the ufo over jerusalem that light spear that just boom and it shoots straight up boom it, yeah i saw that out. yep sure did the just one like over, the one over the dome of the rock that just boom yeah, and it shot the... up and it really... yeah yep yep that that fast so within like a second it was completely gone out of sight and um but there was no noise it just shot out of sight that quick, no fire, no nothing. And it was just this beautiful green glow. And uh, the cows and everything were, was in the field, and she was just sitting there chewing her cud. She didn't care. Didn't bother her at all. Um, well, so that was that was the first yeah. one I saw. Then I can't – go ahead. You're going to ask me something. Yeah, that's just your, the cow, man. The, the cow didn't have yeah. any reaction to it. It's just like, up. Oh, Whatever. Yeah, I'm, I'm cutting away. Yeah, she was just in there chewing grass, and she wasn't startled at all by it. And I, like I said, it was only probably between 100 and 150 maybe yards away from me. It's probably more like it. And yeah. um, I can't remember how much time there was between the other two that I saw, but the second one I saw was on on the same occasion. I was going out to milk the cow, and I saw a green glow. This one was further away up on the mountain, foothills. And um, it did the exact same thing. As soon as I saw it, boom, it shot straight up and it was gone. The exact same thing, same color. You know what and, it sounds and, uh, like? They're like, they're like Here, this is what they're doing. They're like, here I am. This is, I think we figured it out. They're playing They're playing their own game. They're like, hey, here I am. Yeah. Check me out. Boom, see ya. And they're like, yeah, there you know. That's all you need, right? They, they just show themselves. And we've heard it so often. Well, this is a great story. But you know what? Unfortunately, I, I got to bring it in because I've been we're going to breaking news right now. I just want to uh, we we got F one I think joining us. And I'm like, Dang it! Okay, that's that scared me. That scared me. What was that? All right, we're gonna okay. I'm gonna bring on uh, Betsy. Betsy, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Did you hear that? I'm going to bring in F1 again, but I also want to bring in uh, I'm oh, going to bring scary. in Kelly. Kelly, you there? Hello, 619? Okay, weird stuff. Okay, let's try and bring in F1. Here we go. Okay. Somebody's got to shut their background feed. F1 needs to shut down his back one. See what goes down here. And uh, this is some strange alien stuff. Listen to That's some, that's, I think that's, what? Brent, Brent, this is where, Brent, do you hear this stuff? I think they're trying to mess with us. And F1's been off the grid for, like, nobody's been able to talk to him for two weeks. We're going to try one more time. F1, if this is you, turn the background audio down. I don't know what's going on. we got to okay. 
I'm, I'm going to shut it down. Got to shut it down. Got to shut it down. I, I got rid of the line. I cut it. Had to kill that because I don't know what's going on. That seems like a jam. An electronic jamming device. A radar. I don't know. A microwave blast of what I've heard before. Isn't that weird? We're F1 call back. Let's see if we can get this arranged, but something's being suppressed. We got five minutes, so let's go to another caller. Thanks for waiting. 719. You there? Oh, hello. Hello, yes. Oh, uh, good after, good good night. Um I just wanted to talk about um my UFO experience. Absolutely. We got about a few minutes left, so sorry. Oh, uh, yeah, I want to hear it. Go I'll ahead. make it quick. I'll make it quick. Um, well, it was like a drive to Las Vegas, but um, we was um, passing El Paso, and um, out of nowhere, well, it was nighttime. It was um, around 3 a.m. or so. Um, we was following, following the truck, and um, out of nowhere, it was getting all foggy. The truck out of nowhere just vanished. Um, I was just chilling in the back. Um, my mom was in the front. At this time, I was like 15 or so. So um, out of nowhere, like, it just got hot. Like, it, it got bright and hot. My mom was talking about, like, there was a spaceship, a spaceship. I'm like, a spaceship? Um, you mean a UFO? Yeah. Then she was like, yeah, it was a UFO. So I was at that time, the truck we had, it didn't have a sunroof, so I couldn't see it. I could only see the light and how hot it was getting. And it was so close to the truck. Like, it was, it just felt like, I don't know, man, it just felt like heat rays was all on the truck and stuff. But, like, when we passed it, um, you could see the UFO behind the truck. So it was, like, changing colors and stuff, but it was so, it was it was crazy. It was a crazy experience. It was, like, around El Paso, it was dark. There was like a graveyard, and it, it was crazy. It was crazy. Do you, can you recall the highway that you were on? Um, ah, uh, what was it? What was it? It was um, it's a main highway. Ah, oh, crap. Dang, I I can't I can't. It's like coming. It's, okay. it's like almost. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I've 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 been through Vegas. I've been to Utah and all the way to Chicago, but I can't tell you all the roads that it takes to be there. But wow, that sounds incredibly insane. What do you think? Any idea what it was? One of ours or something? Oh, that, it uh, was it was a UFO. It was so close to the truck. Um, like we was the only truck driving on the highway, and it was a it was a UFO. The way it was shape shifting too, it was it it was like a circle. Um, do you think it then it turned into a square? Does the one eighty come come to mind? The highway, the one eighty. One eighty. Yep. 180. Like, is it okay? Ah, like if you're going from Austin to El Paso, it's that highway, that main highway. I, yeah. I, I don't know the number, but yeah. yeah. Well, but that's yeah, a, this has been an amazing night, man. And I, I'm glad I got to your call so you could share that because uh, we, we try to get to everybody. And I'm sorry I can't yes, get sir. to everybody tonight, but. Uh, Man, that sounded like a, an amazing experience, and I'm glad you got to see that and share it to the world right now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I wish I had a camera phone at that time, um, but man, it was a it I was did. a good experience. It wakes it wakes you up to you know you know that you're not alone in this world, you know. And there's things been hot like the government is hiding so much things, you know. And you know, music, the hip hop artists ain't talking about this, you know what I'm saying. Nobody's really talking about this, you know what I'm saying? It's, everybody wants to keep it a secret because if the whole world knows, you know, people might be going crazy and stuff, I guess. But, you know what I'm saying, they, they don't want us to know and stuff. They want us to be blind. So They like the, they, they like that. They like us to be uh, in the dark, uh, very short-term memory span. Let's concentrate yes, on the Let's concentrate on the iPhones and let's not concentrate on uh, humanity. And uh, Yes, sir, and you're hip-hop. right. The hip hop world is waking up, and we we have a lot of people that's in the hip hop world that submit their UFO videos and their beats, and that's quite amazing yeah. because they're they're open minded. Uh, yeah. One of the best movies I've seen last year, and that I had to this year that it reminded me of the true freedom of speech, and it reminded me of what Third Phase Moon is doing. I think the hip hop world is recognizing uh, this movie yeah. straight out of. Straight out of oh yeah, that's, yeah, that's the movie. That's the movie. 
that's a movie, and it's all about freedom of speech. And back in the day, I was like, "Wow, this is heavy. Maybe they should suppress this dialogue." But wow, I was I was wrong when I was a little kid. This is freedom of speech is amazing. I'm gonna take yes, sir. They trying to call. cut us. They they trying to cut us um, from really um talking the the real. They want us to talk about gold chains and taking other women's um I mean other men's girls from them and stuff. You know what I mean? We gotta get back to the real stuff in hip hop, you know what I mean? I mean I like I like future, I like the beats and stuff, but we gotta start talking real like Kendrick and J. Cole yeah. and you know. So That's right. Uh, That's right. We're coming listen- back. We're coming back. We're coming to that. I was uh, listening to some Hendrix today, uh, a few songs. And uh, I was glad to hear it while uh we're working on the third phase of Moon, the new studio that we're gonna be uh, relocating to. Everybody, you know what? Keep your eyes on the skies. This is an incredible show. We'll be back next week, Friday. And don't forget, Third Phase of Moon may call you anytime. Keep your eyes on the skies, everybody. Blake Cousins. Third Phase of Moon.